City of Stevens Point Public Policy and General Government Meeting, recorded April 11, 2022. Call public policy and government to order. We come uh, to order, please. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, clerk, enter. Can you take the roll, please? <laughs> Leek. Here. Christensen. Here. Teamer. Here. Kneebone. Here. Fischler is excused. Fischler is excused. Okay, so first up, we have the license list. And I believe we have what we have here is uh, the first two are Class B uh, beer and, and liquor licenses, and the next three are temporary Class B beer and, and class B wine licenses. So I think we'll take those two, those two groups separately. The first one is the Stevens Point Softball Association at Zenith Park, Stevens Point, beginning on the 19th of April. And then the second is for the Rock and Roll Bar and Grill at 2301 Church Street for the license period beginning uh, April 19th, 22 of this month. We hear a motion for those two. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Motion by uh, Alder Keemer, uh, second from Alder Christensen. Any questions or comments from the committee? Yes. I had questions for Clerk Yenter earlier today, um, just in terms of if these were new liquor licenses altogether, or you know, a more expansive liquor license from from a beer to full alcohol. Um, and she pointed out that they were new to both um, and I guess I have no concerns with um, the rock and roll bar and grill I'm excited to hear that they're moving into the new two harp space um, I just had a question I guess um, for Chief Cuso if if you have any concerns with the softball association I know that's a new thing for the park um, no they've actually had beer before I have no concerns at all um, obviously liquor license is new um, they're only open, I believe, three, four months out of the year, so no issues. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, what I would, um, if there were a concern, I would be concerned because we have a finite number of those Class B liquor licenses. Sure. Um, and granting one to a, an organization that arguably will use it less than a quarter of the year or about a quarter of the year um, is something that you need to be aware of. Okay. Uh, it could provide a business, a year-round business, uh, with the opportunity, but this would be specific for the Softball Association, uh, which is really only operable the, the, a few months out of the year. But we have a finite number. How many do we have left, Clerk? Uh, we have 55 available. After this, we would have none available. So, so this would this use our last this available would, yeah. Class B liquor license. Can establishments get on a waiting list for those, or do they just apply as they open up? Or uh, They can actually put an application on file, okay. and then we go according, and they need to refile every year. And Basically. then we have reserve licenses, have reserve too, but those are crazy $10, expensive. $10,000. Okay. Yeah, ten grand a piece. Uh, we have, what, five? Three. Three? We, yep, we have five of it. Two are five taken, total, so three grand. available. Is there a reserve file of anyone? Waiting or just this current? No, we have three available, so anybody that would apply could get one. Okay. For the reserve license. For the reserve. Sure. Okay. But again, these are what, like? 10,000 initially. 10, re reserve are 10,000, but right. these are. Oh, 500. 500 bucks. Okay. Big difference. Yeah. Any, uh, oh, uh, public comment, a question from the, from the public? Uh, Matt Fisher from Stevens Point Softball Park. Can you um, go to the, the podium, please? Thank you. Matt Disher from Stevens Point Softball. We are actually open six months of the year, sometimes seven. So depending on when we get to start, and we'll end sometime before October, but there are times we're into October. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments from the public? And I guess I never officially asked Assistant Chief uh, Kuzo if there are any comments, but you already said so, so yep. no okay. issues. Okay. Uh, call the question then. Uh, all those in favor of uh, approving the Stevens Point Softball Association and the Rock and Roll Bar and Grill, play, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. And now onto the temporary uh, Class B licenses from St. Peter Parish, 804th Avenue, um, <clears throat> starting on June 11th at, uh, yes, on June 11th actually. Then Create Portage County, 
uh, for Trivia Unplugged on September 24th at Knoll Hangar. And then the wonderful water run uh, in Plover. Wait a minute, why would we be in Plover? They're in Plover, not us. But uh, the, uh, on October 1st at Fifner Pioneer Park. Okay, uh, your motion for those three temporaries. I'll make a motion to approve. Alder Keemer motions. I'll second. Alder Nemo seconds. Uh, discussion from the committee or questions from the committee? Any concerns from PD, Assistant Chief uh, Fuso? Nope, they've actually all been in contact with Lieutenant Mueller and we've got auxiliary and contractual set up. <laughs> Excellent. Um, any questions or comments from the public? Okay, uh, hearing no, nothing further, call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion passes. Okay, now we have our uh, request to hold events and street closings. Uh, first, we'll take these, I think we can take these together too. This would be the Stevens Point Brewery Block Party on May 21st. This is recurring as in as is the wonderful water, wonderful water run on October 1st. Uh, guess we hear a motion for these two. So moved. From Otto Christensen. Keemer, I'll second. Keemer seconds. Discussion from the committee on these two. Uh, Assistant Chief Cooper, any questions or concerns from the PD? Nope, they're reoccurring. We've booked them in the past. It's gone great. Okay. Uh, from the public? Questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, let's uh, call the motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, hearing none, motion passes. Uh, fourth on our Agenda fourth item is the discussion and possible action on chapter 21 ordinance amendments uh, building and premises maintenance and occupancy. Oh, um, Director Konoski, you're we, we do have a presentation. Oh. Uh, if if the committee so desires to to listen to us rant about it, uh, however. Uh, we also uh, have had a number of uh, public discussions on the Chapter 21 changes. Uh, this is uh, essentially consistent with what uh, these you have seen uh, over the last several months uh, through the public policy general government agenda itself. Uh, we included some real life examples of why we made changes to the Chapter 21 ordinance um, <clears throat> via photos. There's one really good one. Uh, but uh, I'm here uh, along with uh, uh, Mr. Cordes as well. We can answer any questions you folks might have. So. Well, I attended the um, informational meeting on this. Uh, do we feel, okay? well, actually, now that I think about it, we, you, we, you, we, some of us had to leave. <laughs> Maybe we should do this. It's up to you. Um, if there's someone on the committee that feels the presentation is in order, we can certainly do that. You went from the audience. Um, otherwise, we can make the presentation available on our website beginning tomorrow. The, the, the presentation was recorded uh, by the community media and should be on the. Yeah, but this one you said was shortened, right? Same stuff. Same, just same short. stuff, just a little shorter. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was there, so I feel comfortable. How do we feel? Is everybody comfortable without doing the presentation? I went through it this afternoon. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm comfortable. I've been yeah. through it as well. Okie doke. Okay. That being said, I guess we're not doing a presentation. Is there any other uh, questions regarding or discussion regarding Chapter 21 ordinance amendments from the committee? No? Okay. I guess we're adjourned. Oh, oh, that's oh yes, that's right. We need a motion. This is three years in the making. Please don't just. <laughs> <laughs> Alder Nebo. I will move to approve the ordinance amendment changes. Oh, yes, that's right. Possible action. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it just discussion. You're right. Wait. Okay. You'll move to approve. Okay. Alder Nebo moves to approve. Alder Christensen second. Okay. Alder Christensen seconds. Further discussion from the committee on the, on the motion. Yes, Alder Keenan. Um, I'll just say I attended the public hearing with Alder Leak, um, and I was really impressed with the time and effort and the clarity you put into this. I mean, the ordinance and the codes are very complicated. 
um, and they're difficult for all of us to go through. And I just, I thought the slideshow was great and the examples um, and the partnerships you sought out with Wild Buns and um, Amberly Schwartz. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really great overview. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate the time and the effort. So thank you. Yeah, I echo that sentiment. Uh, any further questions or uh, comments from the public then? Uh, uh, President Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Melissa Johnson, uh, District 5. I was hoping a, at least a summary presentation. I had a number of people that said they were going to stream. I don't see their names up here, but um, I said there would be a presentation tonight for their questions. So maybe okay. just, just an overview. You, you could also refer them to the recording that was done, which is yeah. more in depth than this one. Yeah, we're always, I always look out an audience and always assume that not everybody's on the same, same understanding. So there may be value in it. Just my suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Well, if, if that's how you feel, let's do the presentation. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. You going to drive, Mayor Wiza? Yep. All right. Yeah. Let's Just let me know what you need. Let's start. Go to slide um, three. Right. Nope. Actually, yeah, definitions. Let's start there. So we looked at definitions, and ultimately we did in definitions is anything that was duplicate, we took out if it was in some other part of a code just to try to eliminate making multiple changes if, if one um, definition changes. Uh, these are some things we added. And again, I think you they're pretty self-explanatory, but things that were um, missing in the code. Code official was important in that we have multiple people enforcing the code right now on the old code just said building inspector. And you can go on to the next slide. I'll go through this as quickly as I can. I'm going too fast. Slow me down. Um, number one was an issue we've run into actually quite frequently. We've had uh, on state statute, it says if there is a violation at a house or a, a premise you're going to rent, a landlord can't rent that without having a written agreement with that, with that tenant prior to signing that lease. It was happening frequently where we'd send out an order and be a violation on a property and they just go lease the property to another tenant. Even though it's in statute, it's not clear who, who would enforce that. So that's now part of our code. Um, one thing we've run into frequently is, is bigger and more complex issues with enforcement. Uh, and, and one that's come up, again, frequently is infestations on large apartment buildings. So this gives us the ability to ask for a compliance plan. So under, under the old code, it was black and white. We had to say you had to comply within 30 days or 60 days. Uh, this works better for the, uh, the, the landlord, for the city, and for the tenant, because we're all following the same template. You know, this is when they're going to comply by and, and you know this is their game plan and this is when they're going to do inspections things like that uh, the firewood restriction actually I did add something after our public comment period um, so the, the slide will be pretty self-explanatory but um, we are running into issues with people storing firewood against their neighbor's fence against a, a neighbor's garage and a zero uh, uh, an issue with an older garage where it's built right in the property lot line we have made an exception with up to one face cord to be stored next to the primary dwelling. The other thing is I did talk to the fire department, the fire marshal about this, and they said there was actually two fires in the last year in which firewood stored near the house was an accelerant. So we're applying the same uh, standard we would to an accessory structure. And outdoor implements, um, those are just snow blowers, lawnmowers, things like that. Okay, you can go on to the next one. This is an example, I think a really good, and these are all just pictures I took within the last two weeks. Um, this one, you can see the firewood stored near the front of the dwelling, in front of the dwelling, and along the neighbor's fence. You can't see it, but the uh, top of the rail is actually busted out because of the neighbors storing their firewood against uh, that, that fence. So, again, to me, it makes common sense, but, you know, what, the reason we adopt these is, is not because of, of common sense sometimes. So I think that's a good example of what we're trying to avoid. Um, this is a situation of what we call outdoor implements, and again, that can be a snowblower, a lawnmower, a grill. Uh, in this particular case, this photo right here, the landlord called me. This is a rental property. He says, uh, this guy, and this is actually after they cleaned it up. 
Um, this guy's running a repair business. We know it, he won't admit to it. He wanted to evict him, but within his lease, it said he had to violate this municipal ordinance. I said, well, he's not in violation of any municipal ordinance, so I can't, because the landlord's calling me asking me for a letter of violation, and I said, I can't give you one because you know, there's nothing in violation under the, the old ordinance. Um, okay. Recreational vehicles. Now, recreational vehicle is anything that doesn't require a license plate to drive down the road. So that's a camper, a pull-behind camper, an ATV, a trailer, a boat, things like that, less than 14 feet in length. Currently under the ordinance, they can be stored anywhere on the property in any number of them. Now, if they're stored on an approved hard surface, which is concrete, gravel, whatever, there's no limit as to the number. Once you move them off of the approved hard surface, we're going to limit it to three. And they have to be stored either in the side yard or the backyard. And that's, yeah, there, here's just some examples. And this one actually, I didn't even happen to notice that the neighbors have a, a very large uh, tractor there that's stored in the front as well. So both of those neighbors would actually have to move those, those trailers and that, that tractor, at least in the side yard, in order to comply. Um, currently, we have no height standard on our, our grass. We just um, enforce under the nuisance provision within our ordinance. Um, this would allow. Oh. My apologies. Can I ask a question? Just... Uh, let's do it after the. Okay. Well, let's uh, hold to it, the hold chair it till first, the end. But after the presentation, typically is when we do that. Um, so, it it'll, it establishes a standard, but then also it uh, establishes uh, the ability for somebody to submit a plan for a natural or native lawn. Uh, we're working with the Wild Ones chapter to actually come up with a template for for people. Not everybody uses a template. We've had a number. Um, submitted to our department through professional landscape companies that then they um, implement these plans. And so we can go on to the next one. So these are two really good examples. Uh, both of these property owners felt they have uh, native lawns. Um, so they felt they were fully compliant with their ordinance. And I'd been, I'm not gonna say fighting, but having spirited discussions with these two property owners over the last uh, two years. And again, within their mind, they were, they were compliant. Uh, but I, I'm not sure this is what uh, we necessarily want the city to look like. Um, so this is what we're trying to avoid. Uh, you know, it's not that they can't do some of this, but really having a plan, if they're just gonna let turf grass grow, they have to have some plan to manage it, some succession plan within the, uh, the native landscape. So go on to the next one. Uh, these are some great examples. Um, I actually had a number of these. But these are some examples of, of what it can look like. I think everybody will agree this is, is quite, uh, uh, quite a nice uh, landscape for these properties. Go on to the next one. Uh, so these are just changes largely within existing properties. Usually these apply to rental properties. Uh, we had different egress requirements for rental properties versus any other property, and now it just, it's the same. It's code complying, two forms of egress, whether it's rental or non-rental property. And the stormwater was one, again, ran across a few of these. Um, you'll see in one of these slides, but there were rain gutters that were 14 feet long going right to the property, neighbor's property line. So it's just trying to avoid, you know, kind of these one-off situations that we'd run into and wouldn't have any in our code. You can actually go to the next one. Yeah, this is actually after they shortened the rain gutters. They actually went, the property line was right along the edge of the driveway, so went to the driveway, and especially in the spring, the water would be discharging on the driveway and it would freeze and, and she would have a constant ice slick on her, on her driveway. Ceiling height requirement, so there was a different ceiling height requirement for properties if it was a owner occupied versus a rental and if you were, you had to be married or blood related and you had a lesser head height standard. Well, we went back and looked through these old permits, we were doing inspections we found that really inspectors at the time were applying that lesser standard to all the properties. So it's just making this consistent, taking properties that are currently, um, you know, they've gotten permits, but they're under this ordinance, they were uh, non-compliant, so it brings them into compliance. Oops. Uh, oh, oh. Did I miss one? Yeah, yeah, just let me real quickly. Um, so in the old ordinance, maximum time limit was 60 days. We've taken that out of there. One thing I've done is with major items on, on houses, roofs, siding, things like that, I usually have people almost a year because some of those things take significant budgeting. 
The nice thing was that with that, since we've started doing that, our, our success rate on these large scale items was below 50%, now it's over 80%. So we found out if we gave people a longer time to comply on these big ticket items, they're more likely to comply. And that's really about it. And my contact information, and um, that's it. And now, if, I mean, I don't know if there are questions, you want me to take them? Or? There's a question here. You got to come up to the lectern, though, so we, everybody can hear you. I just had a question about RVs, campers, and boats. You said it's going to be limited to three on soft surfaces. Mm -hmm. Is that dependent on lot size? It is not dependent on lot size. And um, so with, like, kayaks and things like that, it's only over 14 feet or longer. And if you put, like, four kayaks on a trailer, that's considered one unit. So that is defined within the definition section. Uh, and there is one exception because there are a number of narrow lots within the city. So when I look at these ordinances, I try to see who's going to be really negatively affected and, and how can we avoid that. So if you're on a very narrow lot, uh, you don't have access to an alleyway and you can't access, you don't have at least 10 foot clear span between your garage and your house or your side yard, you can actually still store one in your front yard if you don't literally have access to your backyard. There's, there's an exception for one to be stored in the front yard. Go on. Please uh, approach the podium. I thought I could just do it from the chair, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a quick question. It came up a couple <clears throat> meetings ago, I think. Uh, somebody brought up the 90-day tarp thing, especially with materials being so delayed and everything. Are you going to do that on a case-by-case -case basis, or are we going to extend that 90 days? Because uh, right now it takes so long to get anything to build, to fix a roof, to do whatever so that's that's my only question well originally we had 30 days on there because um, that was consistent with some of their language in the code with 30 day temporary and based on those comments I did extend it to 90 days uh, I think one thing um, anybody would say that works with our department if they get one of those letters and they call us we're usually more than willing to to grant extensions uh, the problem becomes when people don't contact our department when they get a, a letter from us Right, and, and the generally that, that's exactly what happens. If, if there's a delay in materials or for some reason you need an extension, they've always granted it as long as you communicate with them uh, and, and have a solution somewhere down the line. Yep, that's what I thought, I just wanted to do. Well, good, any further questions? <clears throat> okay, well thank you very much, Mr. Cor Direct, Mr. Cortes, yeah. Um, okay, we do have a motion on the table. So, um, just to restate the motion, it is to approve Chapter 21 amendments and updates to the, the ordinances. So, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Now we can adjourn. Now you can adjourn. Finance is up. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.